Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be talking about the structure of the 100 meters that you should be taking if you really want to succeed in the event. So there's three main parts to the entire race that we need to look at. So first of all, you have the start and the drive phase. Second of all would be reaching top speed. Then third is speed maintenance. Now for the drive phase, you want that to last for roughly about 60 meters. So you just set the blocks up right. I have a video already out that explains how to set the blocks up correctly. Once these blocks are set up and optimized for you specifically, don't just listen to the rules of um, two feet for two foot distance from the line for the first foot and three for the other foot. If you think that's too little, then widen that out. If it's too much, shorten it up. Then play around with the blocks to make sure everything's correct. From there, you want to push out the blocks. Triple extension, most amount of force, making sure you, your um, your feet are landing on your center of mass. You're staying low for as long as possible. And the important thing here is not to rush your acceleration because it's really easy to just blast out of the blocks and then see yourself propelling down. Be like, yeah, 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 this is great. And you might do that and you might end up winning up to that point. But it's worth noting that if you're going against people that are at the same level of you, this isn't really going to work because just because you run to the 60 meters, doesn't mean you're going to win at 100 meters. For example, look at a bunch of Usain Bolt's races and you'll always see that he doesn't really have the best starts and rarely is he ever winning basically from the gun. The only time I could think of the top of my head where he was winning from the gun was his 100 meter 958 and probably the 1919 for the 200, but we're talking about 100 here. All the other times he's usually behind and he just catches up. Reason being is his acceleration, because his start was so bad, is naturally more smoother which means he's using his energy to to get there which is why you want to make sure you have a smooth acceleration so just blasting out and because he reaches top speed later he's able to hold it for longer not really longer but it's more about when he reaches it for example everyone else will reach it maybe like 65 70 meters and he might reach at 80 which means he's at he gets to top speed whilst everyone else is still decelerating catches them whilst they're still whilst they're um, whilst he's trying to get to top speed and then he whilst he starts to decelerate everyone else is basically capping out i mean and his form gets to be better because he used less energy to get there which is why it's important that you make sure your drive phase is smooth and controlled and you just eventually start from zero all the way up to wherever your top speed is which you want to reach around 70 meters it'd be much better if you reach it later though it can be hard to pull off and if your top speed isn't high to begin with there's no point in trying to push reaching your top speed later because there's no guarantee that it's going to help you win from there as long as your drive phase was actually smooth you would have used a lot less energy than everyone else in the field did because when the gun goes the first couple of steps and the steps after that for a couple of meters they feel really easy but afterwards you're going to start to feel the fatigue for longer races, this is more exaggerated, but 100, is, it's, it's a slight fatigue you feel, but this fatigue is still detrimental if you build it up too much from the drive phase. And because you have more energy as long as you did this correctly and you've reached your top speed now, now you're going to be able to hold it for about 10 meters. And then from there, you're going to start your speed maintenance from there. And then after that, around 80 meters, you're going to start to decelerate. Be lucky if we decelerate even later than that, but the real goal here was just to make sure the drive phase uses as little energy as possible. You got the top speed as efficiently as possible, and then you just hold your hold your top speed for as long as possible. Then from there, you just naturally are going to start to decelerate. Then you want to decelerate as at a slow rate and as late as possible, which is why the drive phase being as efficient as possible is quite important. From here, though, there isn't really much focus you can do once you're at 80 meters. If you had a really good dry phase, it's really smooth, like you, if you didn't, well, the only thing you can really focus on regardless is really just your form. You want to make sure that at this point, you don't want to um, dip at the line. You want to just stay in the same position, hold your form. doesn't matter if there's people beside you. Don't don't focus on the people beside you. If you do, you're going to tense up and your form is going to start to break down because you're going to start rushing and ten tension is the enemy you only want certain muscles to be ten t under tension whilst you're sprinting regardless of whether this is a 60 100 200 400 or anything you always want to make sure that only specific muscles that actually need to be tense 
are tense otherwise you're going to end up dispersing energy which is going to make you run slow so you want to make sure you hold your form ignore everyone else if everyone else passes you just keep ignoring them because if they can pass you whilst you're relaxed they're going to pass you even faster when you're tense which means you basically stood no chance of winning the race so the main thing here would be if this to such a situation did happen would be to make this a time trial and make sure that you get the best time possible so focus on your form keep running through the line don't dip because if you dip through the line what's going to end up happening is you're supposed to go sprint like this yeah this is the foot but if you dip what's going to end up happening is your foot's going to go like this you want to land you want to land here but if you dip forwards you're going to end up landing here then you're going to have to pull your leg back to here and then go back and what that's going to end up doing is that's going to disperse your force because now you're landing in front of you so if you just try to push your foot in front to stand up push your foot in front of you and then just try and lean forwards and see if you move that's not going to happen but if you land under your body under your center of mass what's going to end up happening is if you lean forwards you're going to end up falling and then you're going to have to try and catch yourself with your other foot if you step forwards, not only are you going to disperse energy, but the ground contact time is going to go up. And this is this is the main important thing here is with the dispersed energy, the power you was originally generating, you've been hoarding for so long, is basically like starting to dis, dis, dissipate, might even be negligible now. And you're going to have to catch up again with your muscles instead of your tendons, which is going to increase your ground contact time. And the reason why the ground contact time is important is because a lot of races that are really really close are actually when they come when they're really close right at the end it's usually down to the ground contact time that determines who wins or not you, you might think it might be the lean or something like that it's actually the ground contact time because if you're racing against someone who has a ground contact time of 0.1 consistently on average for the entire race and you do as well but for the very last step they still have that 0.1 but you have 0.11 what's going to end up happening is you're going to be slightly here and you're going to push. Yeah, that's like that 0 0.01 seconds of ground contact time. And then here you're matching them, but their foot's already here. And when their foot's already here, they're essentially, their upper body is going to just go forwards and push them over the line. Whilst your legs are still trying to, well, they're, no, not trying. They're only starting to push you over the line now once they've already crossed the line. So you might think, yeah, I won. Or... Okay, it's close. I wonder who won. But if you was to notice this, realize what you just did, you'd be like, oh, okay, I might win. If I did, I'm very lucky. But most likely, I lost because of my ground contact time. It'd be a different story if at the line, you was already in the air and then you leaned. Because, I mean, you <laughs> taking a step at that point is, is kind of impossible. So that can kind of be let off. But if you touch, if you like touch the line with your foot and you push and you like you dip at the same time your foot will extend and that will just make you slower and if it was really was a close race that you could have won maybe not easily but because it would look close but essentially it would have been easy like you just needed to continue what you was doing and win and you're gonna lose here and you have to really make sure that you you don't mess up at the end because the first couple of steps, whilst important, they're not that big of a deal because you've still got at least 30-something, maybe even 40-something steps to, to make that all up. If that wasn't the case, Usain Bolt would have lost basically every single race he was in because the main factor of you winning a race is more down to top speed and form, not really the start so much. Though the more efficient it is, the better you're going to be, especially if you're going against a field of equals. So... Make sure that you remember to remember this and you don't just look at the, the start and start panicking, tensing up and wasting your energy when it doesn't matter if you win at the 60, if you lose at the 100. A lot of people win at the 60s but still lose at the 100 because of this problem. They focus on the start but you don't actually look at the end. Make sure that you, you remember the race you're in is to get to the end the far, as fast as possible, not a specific point as fast as possible. Just make sure you just take it patiently and you get to the end of the line first. If you don't get to the end of the line first, but you did your best and you followed this, then you probably wasn't going to win regardless of whether you was tense or not. But being loose and relaxed would make it so that your time is faster 
and potentially you might even get a personal best which who doesn't love if you like my video like the video let me know in the comment section below um check the description because anything i forget to say in the video i always put in the description and if you like my content subscribe helps the channel out a lot um i post every two days at 1 p.m greenwich meantime if you don't know when that is just hit the bell and then you'll be notified instantly